Getting through the chills, I'll see this place Drowning in the monotone, no escape today But I need a hip cut, break the static's hold Losing up this time, it bites the story's told By the boredom, headlines made of gold Twist and shake perspectives in a way so bold They serve it up a humor with a snarky twist Little bites and moves to fill your daily list Hey guys, it is Mo with the Morning Newsy News Nuggets, and we have three stories for you. One is an update. So uh, the surfer who unfortunately had battled back from a severe spinal injury uh, went back to the ocean and got attacked by a great white shark. Sadly, they thought that um, with his leg having washed ashore shortly after he did uh, and they got it to the hospital, they thought they would be able to reattach it. But unfortunately, I guess that was not the case. A surfer whose severed leg washed up on an Australian beach after it was bitten off by a shark has confirmed the limb has not been reattached. Kai McKenzie was surfing near Port McCary in the South New Wales last Tuesday when he described the biggest shark I've ever seen attacked him. The 23-year-old uh, managed to catch a wave into shore where he was helped by a bystander who made a makeshift tourniquet to stem the bleeding. His leg did wash up a short time later and was put on ice by locals before being taken to the hospital where the medical team hoped that surgery may save it. But on Monday, almost a week after the wreck, Mr. McKenzie posted a picture of himself in the hospital and an update on social media. Spot something missing? Ha ha, the post was captioned. Uh, detailing the crazy shark attack in an earlier Instagram post, he said the outpouring of public support has meant the absolute world. To be here, to be able to hold my beautiful Eve and my family is everything to me, he wrote. He also thanked the public for donations that have flooded into a GoFundMe page, which was set up to help him with medical bills, which has taken in over 165000 uh, Australian dollars, which is about a hundred and $8,000 American. I'll be back in the water no time, he added. A spokesperson for the local health district where Mr. McKenzie is receiving treatment could not comment on whether reattachment surgery had been attempted, citing patient privacy. Authorities say Mr. McKenzie, who is spo a sponsored surfer, was bitten by a three-meter great white shark and owes his life to an off-duty police officer who used a dog leash to make a tourniquet for the injured leg. Mr. McKenzie was rushed to a local hospital before being flown to a major trauma center in Newcastle, some 200 kilometers or 140 freedom units, or 124 freedom units away. His severed leg also made the long journey. The keen surfer had only recently returned to the water after suffering a significant neck injury, which forced him to take time off from the sport. In a statement on Tuesday, our, the McKenzie family thanked all the medical staff, bystanders, and first responders who had worked to save the surfer's life. While Australia has more shark attacks than any other country except the U.S., fatal attacks are relatively rare. Our second story, well... Your dad has always warned you, or if you're me and I am the thermostat queen, uh, you know, bad things are going to happen if you try to mess with the air conditioning. And, well, it finally has. We have found the story that proves that right. Quote, if we're going to go out together, or we're going out, we're going out together. Husband throws a pot of gasoline on his wife, then sets her ablaze after an argument over air conditioning settings. Now... I'm guessing one was warm and one was cold, and that's called separate rooms. You go into separate rooms of the house, you can have an ice cube, and you can have a sauna. It's I don't understand how it got this crazy. An argument over air conditioning setting alleged allegedly spurred a husband to use a cooking pot to douse his wife in gasoline, then light her on fire, causing her to pass away at their Florida home. 
Robert Head, 58, is facing charges of first-degree murder and arson, according to a probable cause arrest affidavit. Wilston Fire Rescue responded at 7.48 p.m. on Thursday to a report of a structural fire. When they arrived, the home was fully engulfed in flames, and they were alerted that there was a woman still inside. Crews rushed inside to find the woman already passed away. Officers were told that Head was responsible for the unaliving. Cops found Head hiding in a dog kennel holding a machete saying he was going to um, delete. So they took him into custody. The victim's daughter told deputies that she was in the home when Head allegedly uh, tried to, well, did set the mother ablaze. She reportedly described her relationship with Head as fraught and said he and her mother often argued. She said when she came home from work on Thursday, the air conditioning was set on low and it was hot. The daughter said Head and her mother often argued about the temperature of the home. The verbal confrontation ensued and Head allegedly called his wife names like the B word and she retorted by calling him a broke bee, the affidavit said. Head walked out of the home smiling and returned with a cooking pot full of gasoline, according to the affidavit. He allegedly said, if we're going out, we're going out together. I told you I ain't never leaving you. That's when cops said he took the pot and emptied it on his wife's body and feet. According to the police, the daughter then told them Head lit a piece of paper on fire and threw it at his wife, causing an explosive reaction. The daughter was also burned as she ran out of the house. Post Miranda, the defendant allegedly admitting to admitted to the entire thing, had said he'd been upset because his wife was defending her daughter during arguments ever since she moved in with them about two years ago. After the two argued with him over the AC, he allegedly said he went outside and filled the pot with gas, then came back inside and unalived his wife. He said he planned to take his own life before officers showed up. When asked, the defendant stated he deserved to be unalived by the state for taking the life of a victim. Gainesville ABC affiliate WCJB identified the victim as uh, Genever Head. She was blunt and she was caring. Her nephew, Jamal Bradshaw, told the outlet, it was very rare she would say no to you if you came to ask her for something. She was very supportive. And I am very sorry, uh, Jennifer. Look, her name is spelled G-E-N-E-V-E-T-H-E-R. I apologize for mispronouncing it. It's terrible what happened to this woman, and I just don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, it's a process for all of us, said Bradshaw. Uh, Head is being held at the Levy County Jail with no bond, so at least he's not getting out. I don't know. It sounds like there's mental health. It sounds like this was a toxic relationship and that the air conditioning setting was just the straw that broke the camel's back. I don't know how you get to that place. If if your marriage, if your relationship is in that place, please consider getting out of it. It's obvious that things are not working out and you're not healthy for each other, I, I don't get holding and clinging on to that. But I do understand how scary it is to walk away from something like that. And, you know, if you are in a place where someone is constantly pecking you and, and you know, picking fights and putting you down, please consider leaving. Please consider, you know, your self-worth. And it will be scary, but it will also it's not impossible. Scary, yes. Impossible, no. And I think a lot of people um, can tell you that. Not just my story, but a bunch of other people. Well, uh, the, the scene is too gross for the triathlon. The men's Olympic triathlon is postponed as the scene remains too contaminated for safe swimming seems uh like a good thing i'm sure that's great they did know about the olympics prior to a couple years ago right like they could have figured this out but seems like 
uh, levels of E. coli indicating um, poo uh, remain too high for athletes to compete. So it's a pretty pooey situation. No poo. The river's too gross to swim in. Olympic organizers have postponed the men's triathlon race originally scheduled for Tuesday morning, conceding that the river remains unsafe for swimming. Organizers bumped the men's event to Wednesday, and it is now scheduled to take place after the end of the women's triathlon scheduled for the same day. Quote, despite improvement of water qualities in the last hours, the readings at some points of the swim course are above acceptable levels. World Triathlon, the international governing body for the sport at the Olympics, said in a statement on X. The statement said the organizers could move the race to Friday as a contingency if they needed. Uh, quote, Paris 2024 and the World Triathlon reiterated reiterate that their priority is the health of the athletes, the statement said, referring to the organizers of the Games. Ahead of the Olympics, the city of Paris and local water agencies spent about $1.5 billion to clean up the Seine. Retrofitting an antiquated sewer system that overflows into the river when water or when overwhelmed by heavy rain. As part of the upgrades, the city built a massive underground basin to hold stormwater for treatment. Uh, it was hoped that the river would be clean enough for swimming, but the efforts have not been enough. The most recent published monitoring report from testing conducted July 17th through the 23rd showed that E. coli levels spiked at Pont uh, Alexandre III's bridge, where athletes are meant to start and finish the individual triathlon events. After a day of heavy rain on July 20th, at its peak, contamination was at least double the levels typically considered acceptable under the World Triathlon Competition uh, rules. Routine monitoring in the months leading up to the Games similarly showed that levels of E. coli, an indicator for poo, human poo, uh, regularly spiked to unsafe levels, particularly after rainstorms sent runoff from Paris streets into the river and raised the odds that sewage would enter the water. Unsafe levels of fecal matter in swimming water can cause gastrointestinal disease and make me want to wash my entire self with Purell right now. I'm just like, where are Lysol wipes? I need Lysol wipes. <laughs> It is a common problem in urban waterways across the world. Sunlight can inactivate uh, bacteria, so Paris Olympic organizers had hoped for sunny, clear conditions. Had the weather cooperated, the scene's wastewater system wouldn't have gotten uh, tested by high flows and the sun would have had time to do its work. But instead, Paris was drenched with rain during Friday's opening ceremony and the showers continued into Saturday. Organizers canceled triathlon swim training on Sunday and Monday because the river remained too dirty and then they chose to move the event by at least one more day. Looming worrisome weather could scramble those plans and other events too. Meteo France, the country's meteorolo meteorological agency, predicts scattered thunderstorms starting as early as Tuesday afternoon in Paris. Other events depend on conditions improving. The mixed relay triathlon is scheduled for August 5th local time, followed by a marathon uh, swimming events on August 8th and 9th. Most strains of E. coli are harmless, but their presence is a sign that other and potentially harmful bacteria are present. High bacteria means that there's too much poo in the water. Poo carries germs that make people sick. Daniel Nizdorowski, an E. coli an ecologist who monitors water quality in the U.S. told NBC News last month after a report showed that the scene uh, remained too polluted for athletes to compete. Swimming hasn't been allowed in the river for about a century because of contamination. Many people remain skeptical about whether authorities could clean it up in time for the Games. Last year, Olympic organizers planned to hold test triathlon events in the scene to make sure competitors could, you know, work fairly well to do kind of run-throughs for logistics, that kind of thing. But several of the events were canceled after the river failed pollution tests in August. Uh, 
Then in April, the nonprofit Sir Frieder Foundation Europe shared independent results from six months of tests, which showed that almost all the samples exceeded the permitted level of contamination. Regular monitoring by the Eau de Paris, the city's main water supplier, showed that levels of E. coli spiked after stormy weather throughout May, June, and July. Nonetheless, to show off the river's cleanliness, Paris Mayor Anne Hidalgo, Paris 2024 Olympic President Tony Estinjot, and other officials took a ceremonial plunge into the scene this month. Well, I hope they had Purell and Clorox wipes and a, an entire decontamination suit. Uh, their swim took place when levels were above safe limits, according to the Associated Press. So there you go. Between the, a surfer with the best attitude whatsoever, a husband whose, I guess, the last straw was just making it a little cooler in the house, and the, well, scene being full of poo, I don't know what else to tell you right now for morning newsy news nuggets. But, you know, keep your Purell close to you and stay away from sharks. And for the love of all that is holy, don't touch the thermostat, I think are the lessons I can give you this morning. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I will see you guys later. And I hope you enjoyed these AM Newsy News Nuggets. If you'd like to see more and longer form news content, I do Mornings with Mo at 8 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. And then Nightly Newsy News with Mo at uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, evenings. So those are about an hour and we do all sorts of news stories. I find the weird ones, y'all. So please join me there. Like, subscribe, share, do all the fun YouTube -y things. I will see you guys. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Have a great day. Bye, guys.